Everybody's ready to anoint Victor Wembanyama the 2024 Rookie of the Year, but there's another highly touted youngster currently on the comeback trail who might have something to say about that. After missing the entire 2022-2023 campaign with a foot injury, Chet Holmgren of the Oklahoma City Thunder recently returned to the floor for some summer league action, and the 7'1 Gonzaga product promptly reminded everyone why he went second overall in the NBA draft a year ago. I remember. Be honest, did you forget about Chet? If so, that's cool. We'll tell you what you need to know. Sit back, relax, and take this in. Between the immediate success of Paulo Bancaro, last year's number one overall pick, and the subsequent arrival of generational talent Victor Wembanyama, you could be forgiven for forgetting about Holmgren. I forgive you. But it wasn't that long ago that the NBA world was utterly fascinated by him. In fact, we even argued on this channel that Holmgren should have gone first overall in the 2022 draft to the Orlando Magic. Instead, however, the Magic went with Bancaro, a selection that's definitely aged well so far, and paved the way for the Thunder to snag Holmgren, a so-called unicorn with uncommon ball handling skills, athleticism, and shooting ability for a seven-footer. Those gifts, combined with his elite rim protection and shot blocking, earned him the WCC's Newcomer and Defensive Player of the Year awards in his first and only season at Gonzaga, where he averaged roughly 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 3.7 blocks per game. Ultimately, despite concerns over how his lanky frame would hold up at the highest level, Holmgren was the archetypal modern big man and one of the most tantalizing NBA prospects in recent memory. Unfortunately though, his much anticipated rookie season with the Thunder ended before it even began. After dazzling in his first tour of the Summer League, where he established a new single game record with six blocks, Holmgren suffered a right foot injury while defending LeBron James during a Pro-Am game in August. That Liz Frank injury ended up sidelining him for the entire 2022-2023 season, putting Holmgren in that dubious club alongside Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Blake Griffin, high draft picks who missed their would-be rookie seasons due to injury. Now, however, roughly 10 months later, Holmgren has returned to the floor, having rejoined OKC's Summer League Club. I'm back. And in his first competitive action in almost a year, Holmgren reminded everyone of his incredible potential. After powering through some first quarter rust, Holmgren ultimately put up 15 points, 9 rebounds, 4 blocks, and 2 assists in 29 minutes, propelling his team to a 95-85 victory over the Utah Jazz. He also finished second on OKC in plus-minus and tallied as many blocks as the Jazz did combined. Fundamentally sound block right here, not just one hand, but going up vertical is Chet. Holmgren with two hands. Yes, it's only one game, but Holmgren's strong all-around performance following such an extended layoff has reignited the hype train. His performance earned him kudos from pundits and teammates alike, including Thunder star Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Meanwhile, Thunder forward Josh Giddy has already cheekily projected Holmgren to win the 2024 Rookie of the Year award. Now that'll be a tall task given that he's going up against the most highly touted prospect since LeBron in Wembenyama the French phenom who was recently selected first overall by the San Antonio Spurs. Additionally, Scoot Henderson, the G League Ignite product who went third overall to the Portland Trail Blazers, should also be in the mix. Don't forget though that Holmgren was basketball's next unicorn until Wemby burst onto the scene. And although our odds over at the score bet currently favor Wembenyama by a not insignificant margin, the similarities in their games and builds should at least make for one of the more compelling Rookie of the Year races in recent history. It's not often, after all, that the NBA gets a highly athletic seven-footer who can also handle the ball and shoot threes, and now they've got two of them debuting in the same year. I am very excited. Still, the individual accolades notwithstanding, a healthy home grin should play a major role in what may well be a transformative season in OKC, where the Thunder are looking to build upon a highly productive 2022-2023 campaign. Fueled by a massive leap from Gilgis Alexander, who averaged more than 31 points per game for the NBA's fifth best offense, the Thunder were a playing team this year following consecutive 50 lost seasons. And Holmgren's ability to space the floor and hit from downtown should only improve OKC's offense, which finished 18th in the NBA last season in three-point shooting. Meanwhile, he should also improve a core of rim protectors that was good but not elite last season, ranking 10th in the league in opponents' field goal percentage at the rim. 
Now maybe it's irresponsible to make such bold statements about a guy who's played one exhibition game since last August, but it's also hard not to let your imagination run wild when he's got this kind of pedigree and looks no worse for the wear after almost a year away from the court. And if his impressive return in Utah is any indication, Holmgren is resolved to make sure that nobody forgets about Chet again anytime soon.